Hi friends, so I wanted to go over with you what are these three main ingredients that board certified dermatologists are recommending on a consistent basis to us to have radiant, beautiful, healthy skin. Okay, so I'm going to tell you all three of them, how to use them, what these ingredients are, just briefly, not going down the rabbit hole into great big uh, detail about them, but I'm just going to tell you first off in this paragraph about all three of them and how amazing these ingredients are for our skin. So studies show, and I'm going to link the studies below, that tretinoin can reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles by up to 50% in just 12 weeks, while daily use of sunscreen can prevent up to 80% of premature aging caused by UV exposure. Additionally, incorporating vitamin A into our skincare routine has been shown to improve skin texture and tone by up to 30% in just a few months. So those are the biggies. The rest of it, like uh, different serums, uh, you know, all kinds of different moisturizers, that's all good if you want to spend money on that. But these are the three scientifically proven ingredients that give us the most bang for our buck. So let's go over them. Okay, so let's first start with sunscreen. SPF 30 or above is what is recommended, and of course reapplication every couple hours. Sunscreen is recommended 365 days out of the year, no matter where you live. So I live in the Pacific Northwest, and sometimes um, we've got a lot of sunshine and heat, and most of the time we have rain and clouds. All right, so the um, SPF that I use that I absolutely love, and it was recommended by one of the dermatologists, Dr. Dre, that I'm gonna link below. I've gone through so many of these bottles that this is the one that I like the best. It's the Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer SPF 45 Sunscreen. So what I love about this is my skin is dry and there are just so many moisturizers in here. I love it. I put it on every single morning and I put it on after I use my vitamin C. But it's beautiful. And, but there are so many uh, products out there and there are so many recommendations by different dermatologists. So this is just the one that was recommended by Dr. Dre years ago and I've been using it ever since. As far as the skin, again, all over your body uh, that's exposed. Uh, you can use, of course, a hat and you can use um, skin, or I mean clothing that, that protects our skin. But here's one, SPF 50. This is what I use. But again, there are so many of them that are out there that you can use. And I always try to make sure to cover up my tattoo driving there it is getting exposed here's a really fun one guys i was taking you know i do home health nursing i was taking care of this sweet little girl over the summer and this is what her mom bought her but i loved it it's blue and this is copper tone kids sps spf 50 but check this out and then you kind of can see i'm not really doing a good job in certain areas it does not stay blue but it has this kind of light blue tint. It feels fantastic. Check that out. I love it. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. So sunscreen. Oh, so with sunscreen, we all know by now the damage that the UV rays can cause sun, uh, by the sun, by tanning beds, by those terrible old, uh, remember those sun lamps? I think I looked on Amazon when I was doing a video about um, UV damage and summer sun skin. Um, and those things are still out. I mean, they were out in the 70s. So you just lay under this lamp and burn your skin and damage your skin. So the UV radiation damages the DNA in our skin cells and that causes the skin to grow abnormally and develop benign or malignant growths. Uh, so it's just not worth it. Protect our skin. It doesn't seem like you need it when you're young. I sure didn't think I needed it. My sisters and I used baby oil and then we would just lay out and um, get many, many burns over the years. I'm playing catch up. And as far as um, the retinols go, let's go into that. So retinoids like retinol and tretinoin. Um, I've only been using this for, I would say, maybe in my 50s i mean i started then in my early 50s so this is what i use and i use the 0.05 percent so with this you have to start slow um, retinoids are the gold standard for skin care for anti-aging anti-wrinkle anti-acne this is prescription strength though okay so this is just what I mentioned, recommended for anti-aging acne treatment and improving skin texture. They promote cell turnover, stimulate collagen production, and help fade dark spots and hyperpigmentation. 
it can cause some serious irritation. And I know that's a big reason why a lot of people don't use this. They say to use a pea size amount and no more. That's what I use. Um, I've been using this, like I said, for many years. I started late on it though, but I use it for many years, have used it for many years. This is what I do. It goes all over and it goes on my chest and my neck. Neck though, you can get an awful lot of irritation on the neck. Um, so there's another one that I do use that I like that seems to be tolerated, the Aven. I tolerate it better on my neck, but not always. Um, and what does the irritation look like? It's like peeling and flaking and a lot of redness. Um, and then I read somewhere that if you um, trade off on some of your retinol products, that if you trade off on some of your retinol products and use different ones, say if you use this three times a week, then you turn around and you use this one here, like the CeraVe Resurfacing Retinol Serum. I love this. And then I use this two days a week, maybe. So I do switch off. There are so many products now out on the market for the retinols. So the next one, and this one has kind of come late in the game, I feel, and that is the vitamin C. It's the L-ascorbic acid type of vitamin C because that's the kind that's recommended um, because of its purity and biologically active form. That's the type that they recommend as the best form. It it's an anti oh an antioxidant. Okay, so we have an antioxidant in this, which is the vitamin A, and then we have an antioxidant in vitamin C. So both of these are antioxidants, and both of these are going to help with environmental damage that occurs to our skin. All right, this vitamin C serum is, was stupid expensive. I got it at my dermatology clinic. It's way too expensive. How about something like this? This is the Inky List 15% Vitamin C and EGF Serum. There's nothing wrong with this. This is a beautiful product. And this was recommended by another dermatologist that I follow all the time on YouTube. I'll link him below. He talked about this a lot. I love this. But then I go to my dermatologist clinic and then they're telling me that this is just a, the amazing product that they have. So expensive. Come on. <laughs> but I fell for it. It feels great. I wouldn't buy it again. This I repurchase and I will continue to repurchase it over and over again for my face. So how to apply these? We were on vitamin C. So let me just say that the, recommend, the recommendation for applying vitamin C is in the morning after you cleanse your skin, you put on your vitamin C and then you put on your SPF. As far as when to put on your tretinoin, uh, that one is at night. So you're going to have a clean, dry face, put on your pea size ish amount, and put that all over your face, only on your neck if your neck can tolerate it. But that one is the nighttime one. Moisturize over it. Some people don't use moisturizer at all. That's okay. I use moisturizer over it, but I let these different things dry in between. I wanted to share with you what my dermatologist told me when I asked him. I was in getting Kybella. You all know what that is. Well, if you don't, I'll insert something here or here about what Kybella is. It's a product that came out years ago. It's injected into different areas of the body. At that time, FDA approved only for the neck. I got it for the neck. And what a huge difference. I still have a little bit of issue here, and that's because I have an enlarged lymph node that is, does, doesn't ever go down. The Kybella was injected three different times on this side, and this is the best that we can do. Um, but at that time, I asked him, what would you recommend for my skin? What would you tell me that I should be doing? Um, I think this was probably 10 years ago. And here's a new box because I have used this every day or five days a week at least, ever since he told me. And he recommends the Skin Medica. I realize, again, this is a hefty price, but there's also another product that is an AAHBHA exfoliating cleanser that's much less expensive. I know because I don't travel with this larger size here. I get the smaller size and that's what I travel with. So I will insert information about that. But I love this product. This is considered an exfoliating cleanser that can be used three, to, three times a week, five times a week, or every single day if you build up to that. Uh, like I said, I've used this ever since he recommended it to me. You know, how do you measure if these things are really working or not? You can't. I mean, I think so. I don't have any wrinkles except around my eyes. Um, I got the normal wrinkles around my eyes. As far as my forehead, this here and around 
my trigeminal nerve and around my head is uh, Botox that I get every 12 weeks for migraines. I don't get Botox here. I don't, I don't get it anywhere else and I don't get fillers. Um, so nothing else except these products on a consistent basis. I probably won't do Botox down here, but you know, never say never. But I don't, I'm not doing that at this point. I'm just consistent with these products. And the other thing that he recommended is the eye cream. It's also by Skin Medica, and it's again stupid expensive. And that's what it looks like. I don't like this container. I can't tell you how many times after using different serums at night, and I'm going to go reach for this after a shower, and I drop it because it's it's, it's a saucer. Who came up with this? It should be in a pump. I've gone through, you know, maybe five of these. I would say, and I'm not going to repurchase this. There is no need. I don't even use it very consistently this one. I just bring my tretinoin and other serums right up here underneath all the way as far up as I can get it. I want to know what you're using, so let me know. Um, I These products are the same tried and true that I have used over and over again for many years, and like I said, most of them come from other uh, board-certified dermatologists besides Dr. Dre that I, I've listened to, um, and they consistently talk about these three products. I hope I explained what they were well enough. I can definitely pop in more information above, but I just wanted to give a basic rundown of what these two antioxidants and sunscreen can do for our skin and uh, how many, many products are out now on, with a price point that's low, medium, and high that can meet everybody's needs. If you can recommend anything, I'm open to that. And side note, there's one other thing that I just tried um, for the neck, and that is, have you heard of microneedling? I don't trust myself and don't believe that I should be ordering something off Amazon and doing my own microneedling. Needling. I would never do that. But I looked at a um, something called radio frequency microneedling, and I have that done at my dermatologist. Um, you can do one, two, or recommended three. I have done two so far, and I would love to share about that experience with you. It's not a lifelong thing. It doesn't last forever. Apparently, a lot of people go in once a year for a little tune-up, but it is something that I'm looking into for collagen production and to tighten up this area because a facelift is not in the cards. Um, I hope that this was helpful, and please share please consider subscribing um, because this other microneedling um, video is going to come out next month, but I would love for you to subscribe. All of my YouTube videos are either on lifestyle, healthy types of things, things that nurture our body and soul, and health topics in general. Have a good day.